Hey everybody, welcome to Technical. If you are a fan of my channel, you will know that I am all about saving money, and the one thing that nobody ever talks about as a means to save money is the process of undervolting. Can you take a CPU, reduce its core voltage, save on overall power consumption, and get the same kind of performance? Well, today we want to find out. <laughs> Okay, so let's start with the basics. Number one, we are going to be using a mini ITX system today, my TV PC in fact, which involves an SG13 Silverstone case, an i5-4590 uh, with multi-core turbo enabled, I'll explain what that is later if you're not familiar, an H97i plus motherboard, a reference GCX960, a Corsair SF450 power supply, the CPU is cooled by a deep cool Gabriel cooler, low profile, and I think the system has 8 or 16 gigs of RAM in it. I honestly don't remember. I think 16. But anyway, that's not really relevant. What really matters is the CPU and thermal environment that it rests in. Those are the, the critical elements here. I also think it's very important for you to understand what voltage is before we continue. So voltage is best defined as electrical pressure. It's the density of electrons in a given system. And the closer they are together, the more they like to fight and they like to repel from one another and be combative. And that was what creates the pressure. And amperage is the current at which these electrons are flowing through a system in a given direction. Okay, so you got that? You put the two together and you get wattage. Sort of. You kind of actually get volt amps and then something called power factor allows you to calculate wattage. But that's not really all that important in this case. We'll just limit it to the simple stuff for the purposes of this exercise. Anyhow, let's switch over to the system now and I'll walk you through the undervolting process step by step. So before I begin, let's talk a bit about multi-core turbo and or multi-core enhancement as it is sometimes called. Basically, every chip has an advertised base clock and an advertised turbo clock. And when all four or six or eight cores are active at a given time, those clock speeds will adjust or lower themselves in order to keep the chip within respective voltage and thermal limits that are set at stock from the factory. Now you can on most motherboards ignore a lot of these uh, protections if you will and push all four cores to their maximum possible turbo ratio even if it's a locked chip on an H motherboard, doesn't matter. And that's what we're doing here. So rather than have this i5-4590 run at its advertised 3.5 gigahertz across all four cores under 100% load, we're pushing them all the way up to 3.7. This is technically speaking an overclock, although it is a very mild one. It usually does not require any additional voltage unto itself, but you will notice that power consumption increases because the adaptive voltage that comes at stock will usually bump up just a bit higher to accommodate the chip when it's under full load. Here you see that everything is set to stock, the voltage is set to auto and is currently being reported at 0.952 volts on the core. Make sense? Okay. Okay, so here we are running Prime 95 26.6 small FFTs to get the CPU under 100% load and we are succeeding. 3.7 gigahertz happens to be the clock speed as advertised. The core voltage is not being reported by HW Info 64 for some reason, but the core VIDs individually are coming back at 1.04 ish. The important things to note here maximum core temperature looks to be about 67 or 68 degrees, depending on when you look. The CPU package power is being reported at just under 61 watts, and the chassis fan is currently spinning at about 18 to 1850, while the CPU fan is between 1400 and 1450 RPMs. Let's see if we can change these by undervolting. As you can see here, I have gone back into the BIOS and changed just three things. It's that easy. The first thing you change, and your motherboard may vary, is switching CPU core voltage away from auto and on to offset mode. You can also employ manual mode if you would like to set a manual voltage, but offset still allows for variability and it changes with load, so I prefer that. The negative 100 millivolts you see in the third section is an arbitrary number. I happen to know that this motherboard and CPU will work with 100 fewer millivolts, but uh, your results may vary. You might be only able to get 50 or 75 less, or maybe you'll get upwards of 200. Play around and see. There is no danger in changing this number and running stress tests just to see exactly how much you can save. And depending on your motherboard, you might need to change the offset mode sign from positive to negative. You don't want to add voltage here, you want to subtract it. This is just like overclocking, except in reverse. Rather than applying more voltage to achieve stability, you're trying to subtract it and achieve stability. Simple as that. So lastly here, let's boot it back up and see exactly what kind of savings we were able to achieve. 
So here we are once again on the Prime95 slash HW Info 64 screen. And as you can see from the first section, none of the stats have changed outside of the core VIDs, which are a corresponding 100 millivolts lower. The important parts, look at those temperatures. The core max looks to be around 62 or 63, and that is with the CPU fan speed that is a full 100 or 150 RPMs lower. So not only are we getting a cooler temperature on the core, we're doing it more quietly and silently, which is super important for a system like a TV PC, which you want to be as quiet as possible. Chassis fan itself, which draws in air from the outside into the case, has also slowed down to correspond with the reduced thermal output. And last but not least, CPU package power is being reported at 51 to 52 watts, depending on when we take a look. That's a full 9 watts less than what we had before. But does all this save you money? I happen to live in the province of Ontario, here in the city of Toronto, so I went on the Toronto Hydro website and ran it through the calculator, and it turns out that if I ran this system for three hours a day, every single day, for the next year, I would save, at the end of that year, a whopping 100 cents. So, definitely, your power bill should not be the primary motivator for undervolting a CPU because it doesn't really save you all that much. And if you don't pay a power bill and you live at home with your mama, it don't matter at all. But there are other motivations, economical in nature, that would make you want to undervolt a CPU. Number one, the longevity of electronics is tied directly to the amount of electrical stress that they receive in their lifetime. We don't necessarily know this to be verifiably true with PC components because no one's ever done like 10 year testing on CPU longevity with relation to voltage, but we know that it's true for other electronics, so it makes sense not to feed your CPU more voltage or current than it needs. Keep it as low power as possible without sacrificing performance, and you could theoretically improve its lifespan. If you can get another six months to a year to two years out of your CPU, and it's still effective for what you want it to do, that's less money that you have to spend in the end to replace it. Secondly, do you air condition your space? Do you pay for it? Well, an important thing to remember is that Power consumption is directly tied to thermal output. The more power you put through an electronic, the more heat it's gonna output. So even if you're saving just a few watts, all of that can contribute to lower temperatures in your environment. And if you're in a confined space, like Mr. J's Two Cents over there in his little office with Skunk Works, every watt matters. And it could make your environment incredibly uncomfortable to sit in and incredibly expensive to keep cool. Removing of heat from a space is not cheap. But even if economic motivators are not your thing, as they say, silence is golden. And the fact that you're able to run the system cooler and quieter is great for your overall gaming experience and is something that should definitely not be overlooked in this equation. Anyway, I think we're going to call that one a video, but before I go, to those of you who won my 2,000 subscriber giveaway, you have free Steam keys waiting for you. I still have to hear from about six or seven of you, so get on it and fucking message me. The games I've given away thus far are Betrayer, Drakensang, Spelunky, Pixel Junk Eden, Retro Pixel Castles, Strata, Lethal War RPG, Adventures of Shuggy, Knights of Pen and Paper Plus One, Alien Breed Trilogy, and Saints Row 2. So these are not necessarily the greatest games that you'll ever hear of, but they're fucking free. So come get them already. I'm tired of waiting. I got shit to do. Anyway, follow me on Twitter at Ofa and uh, Twitch. I'll this weekend. I'll take some time to do some twitching. I fucking promise. I got to get on that. Anyway, girlfriend's coming. She wants to watch baseball game so peace out